So I should put our stuff up here so you can see who, exactly who we are. Bam, the recovering Democrat. And so it is Tuesday and it is our time to do our podcast. And today we are going to be talking about that of Capital B News. Capital B News is a new um, black media. They call it black led uh, news organization slash news outlet. It is new and I'm going to get into all of that in just a few. But we're going to go into the ins and outs of it and why you should care or not care. So, Donovan, what say you before we get started? All right, you guys, welcome to the podcast. And thank you guys for tuning in with us. You can catch us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and all your podcast formats. Again, this is the Demetri K Podcast, and we are glad to have you. Uh, real quick today. The continuation of the disrespect of the black voter and the black person, the Biden administration. What did they do today? They said, you know, we're going to do something for those Negroes. We are going to go ahead and give them some damn uh, drug paraphernalia so they could smoke their drugs because that's a, a very serious, serious issue for black folks. So see, Negroes, we've done something for you. We're giving you drug paraphernalia, even though in a lot of cities and on the federal level, possessing drug paraphernalia is a crime. <laughs> so we might get a little bit into that a little bit later on. But so again, we're going to talk about a news organization called Capital B, Capital B News. The B stands for Black. So this organization was started in November of 2020 by Lauren Williams and Akoto Afori Atta. They both worked at The Root together. You guys know The Root magazine. They worked there in 2010. And then they went off their separate ways. Uh, Lauren uh, worked at the, uh, again, the root, the Vox, uh, Vox rather, and Mother Jones, which tend to be, you know, left leaning uh, publications. And Akoto, she also worked at the root and the Trace. All right. And so they decided they would start the news organization slash newsroom um, during the protest of 2020. You guys remember when George Floyd was murdered and there was a lot of unrest. And so they decided they would start the publication then. Now, it is anchored outside, or in Atlanta, I should say, and they are a nonprofit uh, organization that focus on equity and education, criminal justice issues, black po uh, political power, housing, health, environment, and they are a nonprofit, as I said, and so they are funded by philanthropic revenue, uh, foundation grants, major individual gifts, corporate donations, individual contributions through their membership program. If you go onto their website, a thing will uh, you know, pop up a couple of seconds after you've been on there. And I'll ask you if you want to donate to their uh, news organization. Also, um, so far, they have raised about $9 million in philanthropic backing. And some of their biggest funders are that of the Ford Foundation and the American Journalism. Uh, I think that's what it is, American Journalism. And so those tend to uh, be uh, left-leaning organizations as well. Um, and so they said they want to draw support from donors who share their views, okay? So I just told you who their major donors are. And they, on their, um, a lot of their interviews and stuff, they said they want to draw support from donors that share their views. So that should be very telling to you just right off the rip. Now, I, as I was doing a lot of research, and I did do real a lot quick, of research. I'm going to cut you off real quick. Could you explain? Because a lot of people get confused. What is the difference? You hear this a lot, the right or the left. What does that mean? I mean could you kind of like break that down? So the right is uh, conservative Republican. The left is Democrat uh, and uh, liberal, if you will. Gotcha. And so uh, these donors tend to uh, be left leaning, liberal, Democrat, if you will. OK. Um, and so they again, they like to draw support from donors who think like them share the same values. That's very telling. So as I was doing a lot of research on this organization, and again, it's new and they've kind of been springing up a little bit here and there on different uh, TV programs and stuff like that. They kind of said they were trying to make the difference between being black and black led. That's what it said in some of the interviews and some of the things that I was reading it says black and black led. And so I'm like, whatever can that mean black and then black led. All right. So I dug a little deeper into their organization and Lauren and Okoto, they are the uh, founders and they hold positions on the board and things like that. But as I dug a little deeper, I real, and, and by the way, here are um, 
a Kodo. So on the um, in the pink shirt is Lauren. Okay, and they're then, cute. They're cute. Oh, very beautiful sisters. And on the uh, in the blue shirt is a Kodo. So these are the sisters that started the uh, Capital B news publication. So I'm not sure if it's. I guess it's probably going to start off as like a newspaper from what it looks like. Then uh, perhaps they will branch out into other avenues. Now, now, a uh, real quick question for you. Now, that this wouldn't be another Black Lives Matter grifting uh, program, would it? Um, I have no idea because they are fairly new okay. at this moment. All right. And so as I began to look a little bit further into the organization, like, OK, well, let me see who these people are exactly. And so the CEO of their board is Sarah Beth Berman. What a surprise. Yeah, so Sarah Beth Berman is the CEO of the uh, board of Capital B News. And so uh, CEO of a board, they usually, they it, it, their roles really vary, but they can do hiring of employees, overseeing day-to-day operations of the business. Final say. Yeah, and, you know, making sure that the organization stays on task and adheres to the goals that are set forth. They do a lot of monitoring, controlling, and, you know, the, the day-to-day, um, well, it may be day-to-day because a lot of boards don't meet on a daily basis. Perhaps theirs don't meet on a daily basis. Now, ordinarily, board members are not paid a salary, but they can get some sort of a stipend or fees and, you know, just different things like that for being board members. So it's not a totally... Uh, voluntary position. This might be, I don't know, but in, in a lot of cases, they're not. And so the reason I bring up Sarah Beth Berman is because it's like that kind of maybe, maybe that answers the question of black and black led because they have a white woman at the, at the board of uh, the CEO of your organization, but then they say that the uh, Capital B News is about the business of bringing awareness to uh, things that go on, I guess, in a black community. And so some of the things that they are focused on is if I, and I think I read all of that equity and education criminal. Yes, I read all of that. Um, and so they really want to give a voice to black people because they said, especially in a lot of these white owned news outlets, you don't see a lot of black journalists and they really don't speak uh, to black people's issues the way black people can speak to our issues. And so they're saying that this is why they came up with the idea, of course, after the uh, protests of 2020. So Donovan and I are going to get into uh, what this means and exactly what it means for black people and what is it really. But I just wanted you guys to get a look at uh, the what's behind the booty, what's behind the bee. Yeah, the, uh, the the CEO, and I also wanted to show you this before we really get into it, because I want to give you guys a, a well-rounded uh, opinion. Opi- you know, well, you know, just give you as much information as I can. Mm-hmm. So here it says, we aim to be an antidote to the misinformation, disinformation, and low-quality, low-context news that clouds our information pipelines. Capital B offers clear, accessible reporting on a local and national level that's tailored to the needs of our audience and free for all capital B is the news we deserve. Okay. So if you guys look at a couple of key words here, says it aims to be the antidote to misinformation, disinformation, and low quality, low context news that clouds our information pipelines. And so when I read that, I was like, well, who might they be talking about? Because Donovan and I, we consider ourselves new black media. And there's a whole host of other uh, entities out there, the African Diaspora News Channel. And I can go on and on and forever about the new uh, black media that's out there. And so I'm like, what are you the antidote to? Are you speaking to us? Like, who are you speaking to? Because we are giving the information that black people need. And so exactly what information are you talking about that you need to be the antidote to? And so we're going to get into that. So Donovan, what say you? All right. Well, um, again, um, thank you. Welcome to the podcast. But this is very interesting. This is very interesting because um, I first caught wind of these ladies uh, late last year. I think they initially came out in around uh, October in the wintertime, sometime in the wintertime. Don't quote me on that. And I saw them on a few um, shows, MSNBC, CNN, you know, whatever these these typical shows. And I was like, hmm. Here's a group that is promoting themselves as this independent new voice things, but they're promoting themselves on networks that mislead black people. 
So, and of course, with the Black Lives Matter situation, you know, I'm wondering if this is a big grifting campaign again, because we're seeing the same kind of uh, playbook to two women saying that they're going to be different. They're going to do stuff different. They're going to kick the butt out of white supremacy by doing the electric slide and all this other stuff that, you know, people love to do. And I did a little homework on, on the on the on this folks, too. Now, we recently just had a, a network that folded 25 million. J.C. Watts was behind it and a lot of black people were behind it. And that one just folded. And, and why? Because black people weren't watching them like that, because they were basically doing what and reporting on what the mainstream lame, lamestream media reports on. Well, that one is still it's up and running, but they they laid a lot yeah. of people off. Yeah, they laid a lot of people off. That's what I'm saying. But 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 their viewership isn't what it is. And and people, you always got to look at the 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 way they say certain things. They'll say, "Oh, uh, we could reach 50 million people," but that doesn't mean 50 million people are watching. Okay, so we got to be pay particular attention to how they ver uh, verbiage things. And another thing is, as a young, well, not a young, a middle aged man, I'm wondering is this going to be another platform for uh, women to bash men? You know, uh, you know, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying, because if there's a certain narrative that is being uh, placated, as we know in the lamestream media, you have a um, narrative. That black men aren't in, aren't in the conversation. We're absent. We're doing this. We're doing that. So me as a black man, I as a black man, I, I have a concern in regards to is this another platform to bash black men? And that's just, you know, some things that I think about in regards to how, how are they going to do that? But the new black media has been driving the narrative. And it, I just find it kind of weird that in the last couple of months with Joe Biden's, you know, being exposed and, you know, and, and the new black media reporting on things that people do not ever report on that there's been several attempts to bring, oh, we're going to bring some new black uh, news. We're going to bring new, we're going to do something different. We're going to do something different. I mean, where was all this three years ago? Where was all this five years ago? So that's, you know, I have a little concern when, when I see these groups pop up and I, I really want to know who is funding them, what is going on. And when I see a white, it, it, it's not about colorism, but we know in our community, like Malcolm X said, if you want to help us, you can help us, but you can't join us. You know, you have a lady that is the CEO who has a final situation because I don't see these people standing up for us, but then you're going to back a information network that's going to be unapologetic. Now, I was in the military for a lot of years, right? I was a leader of men and women, correct, Demetra? Even though I'm a black man leading, what did I have to do above and above and beyond anything else? You have to set the example. I had to follow orders, right? I had to follow the orders of the people that are calling the shots. And so I have a concern when uh, these women make that kind or these people in this particular network make that thing like, well, I don't know an organization where I'm just this rogue employee and I can just, you know, do whatever I want to do. It, I, I just haven't seen that yet in any organization, even though I was a, and I wasn't a militant person, I was in the military, but I led men and women. I had to do what was told to me from back behind the scenes. So absolutely. So yeah, there's a lot to unpack here in the next 45 minutes or so. So again, uh, and I don't want to, this is not coming off as bashing capital B news. We're just trying to learn a little bit more about them and have a conversation. Who sent them? Who sent them? Yeah, yeah, have a conversation as to what's really going on here because we all know uh, there is uh, news, black news outlets that are giving black people the news that you can use and the news you, can, you actually need, not the watered down version of stuff. And so when you look at some of their biggest donors, the Ford Foundation and the American Journalism uh, Association or something, yeah. yeah something yeah. like that. Um, they're the largest donors, and those are left-leaning uh, organizations. Uh, the Ford Foundation is given to that of Joe Biden, and I'm sure it's given to a lot, a whole lot of other uh, Democrat uh, candidates. Uh, candidates. Staff, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you hear about those type of things going on, and, and they're their biggest funders, 
What does that tell us? It tells us that they are probably more than like, and I've read some of their articles and in some of their articles, they talk about, you know, black people and uh, the COVID and the vaccine. They also are um, big on Stacey Abrams. And we know that Stacey Abrams is a big time Democrat and things like that. Hack, so, yeah, she's a big time Democratic hack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you hear those type of things that I just told you, how progressive is that really for black people? Is this an organization that's going to continue to give, you know, the same old, same old? Is it, or is it, or could, could this be a platform for the Democratic Party to bring these candidates uh, to the network and kind of talk to the grassroots? Because if you, if you notice, have you guys noticed this? And I don't mean to cut you off too much. I'm sorry. But I think this is important because I sit a, and I observe things. I know you guys say I talk a lot, but I observe things. Do, have you guys noticed that Republican and MAGA people, they go and talk to the YouTubers that are having shows and pushing that agenda and doing those things. They have no problem. Donald Trump just had an interview with Candace Owens. Right. Well, I mean, I, I, I guess, and, and I mean, in all fairness, left wing uh, candidates and stuff, they do go talk to, you know, certain YouTubers sometimes. But when you see those type of that type of backing, it is very concerning. Like, OK, well, you're saying that you're going to be different and you're going to actually be the antidote to misinformation. Well, depending on what information you're going to deliver, you're probably going to deliver more mis misinformation because right. we know that a lot of these outlets who are uh, Democrat heavy. All they do is deliver misinformation to black people, specifically lies, things that they're going to do and they, you know, all these other things and they don't do them. And so it's like what, and again, I'm not trying to be shady, but when I did my research, be shady, be shady. when I did my research on this organization, I'm like, it's more of the same. It's, you know, and they came from the root. I don't know if I need to say any more about that, but they came from the root. And so it's like, you're going to build another organization to do what exactly? What are you going to tell us that's actually going to help black people rise out of what's going on? One Absolutely. of the things I want to talk about is gentrification. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of the candidates that you are you probably will champion in the Democratic Party, they don't do anything to stop gentrification. And if you want a, uh, a great example of that, the Super Bowl is going on this weekend, the SoFi Stadium. Is right there in Inglewood, and that is the district of Maxine Waters. And what does she do to stop that? And you know, you hear a lot of people talk about oh, the, the, the stadium, the game, and this, that, and the other. And it, it, it's got these amenities, but they don't talk about the the damage that it did to black people in that neighborhood. Yeah. It misplaced a lot of black people. So, if you're going to continue giving that type of information, then what? Are you doing differently than the regular mainstream black media outlets are doing? Right. Absolutely. And um, I don't know if you guys heard today. Keisha Lance Bottoms, she was the I think I think she still is the mayor of Atlanta right now. I think she still is. I don't believe she is. She. Uh... I can't remember his name, but he uh, it's a new guy. Okay, it's a new guy. Okay, well, yeah. Keisha Lance Bottom was a uh, was a mayor of Atlanta, and um, she announced today that guess where she's going to go to work? Where is that? MSNBC. Isn't this strange how these Democratic people? Because remember, you guys, she was vetted to be a possible VP candidate as a black woman. As a black woman, she's going to be a VP, and then all of a sudden. She doesn't run for re-election because she knew she was going to get beat. And then here's her payoff, MSNBC. So what they're doing is they're taking these political shills and they're saying, okay, you still want to get your money and stuff. We're going to put you in media so you can continue to mislead uh, the masses. And that's just my opinion in that. Because what else, as a politician, what else can you do? If, if you don't run for office and be a politician, then you go in to a media thing and become an analyst or whatever. Yeah, which is not surprising because most uh, Democratic uh, candidates, one way, shape, or form, they go to MSNBC because it is a Democratic, you know, uh, leaning propaganda uh, arm. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, media outlet. So that's not a terrible surprise. But I mean, I, I just find it problem. What was problematic to me about Capital B News is that. It is probably going to mislead a lot of people and it's going to be probably like a sort of like the Rolling Martin outlet yeah. where they tell black people the talking points of the Democrats and, you know, make it sound good, make it sound progressive. 
And a lot of people will listen to that, not really being able to deep dive. I mean, because I spent a little bit of time deep diving into this organization and I'm like, okay, well, this sounds like more of the same. It's not anything that's going to be talking truth to power and talk about get these Democrats out of there and stop voting right. for hold the vote until they're not going to do any of that. They're mm-hmm. going to continue. Like I said, one of the first articles that I saw on there was that of Stacey Abrams. So I'm like, okay, I probably don't need to dig in any deeper, but I will because I want to be just a little bit more informed about what it is they're doing. Right. Well, you got to look at it also like like this. Remember when Roland Martin came to the YouTube channel with Kurt cursing us out and all this other stuff, and now he got, you know, infused with some Democratic money because he misled everybody to vote for Biden and all this stuff, and now he's the I'm the man. Y'all, y'all just jealous of me, but eat, but eat, but eat. Y'all, 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 y'all just jealous. Y'all jealous of me because I got the money. You know, I, I you know, my studio is better than your studio. You know, all this bull crap, right? But what it is, is the main media outlets have learned that, okay, you've got your core baby boomer group, which is fine. Baby boomers are going to watch TV. They're going to watch their MSNBC. They're going to watch their CNN. But to get that, to continue to mislead the next group, you got to get down on the internet and on these smartphones where the young people are more susceptible to get their news from. And I, this is my opinion. I think... They see what the new black media has done and how much attention we have actually pulled away from the Democratic Party and that spell that they have over black people. Well, golly, you know, it's, it's either this or that. If you don't, if you, if you, if you don't vote Democrat, what the Republicans going to do for you? Hmm, I don't know. If I'm getting nothing from the Democrats and I already know the Republicans ain't going to do nothing, nothing for me, I got nothing to lose. Right, you gotta, you vote Democrat. That makes no sense, you know. But you, 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 but you, you see what I'm saying. So they've come down and said, "This is how we could appeal to these younger voters." Because let's face it, and I'm not trying to uh, throw a jig or a dig at the baby boomers, but let's face it, there are more of them passing. Their voter base is shrinking while the younger base is growing. There are more people turning 18 than there are people. To t- eligible to vote, then there are people passing away that c- can no longer vote. Right. So and th- there's a lot to, to think about there with this new organization. And I just know, you know, unfortunately, and because to me, you got nine million dollars, you know, as 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 uh, seed money, if you will, backing. That's that's quite a bit of money for a little podunk, if you will, starting out. We're gonna us two girls like Laverne and Shirley. We're gonna go out there and give it a go. And or is it a grift? I mean, you know, what I mean, I, I'm not saying it is. That's not what I'm saying. But from what we've seen in past history. Ninety-six million dollars from Black Lives Matter is still uncounted for, but yet properties are being, you know, built. And then, like you said, they give them nine million dollars. We've been doing this for over six years, right? And nobody's so, giving us that kind of money. Well, I mean, it's a matter of will you take that kind of money, you know? Right. Because they said too that they don't, they won't take money from people who have certain interests and things like that. But it's like, yeah, it's a lie because I don't think that the Ford Foundation is going to give you money if you're talking in opposition yeah. to the people they usually donate money to. And the other thing, like I said, I mean, you got a white woman sitting at the board, the helm of your board. I mean, how much, how black led is that if mm-hmm. you got a white woman sitting up there? And so, of course, we know oftentimes when white people are at the helm of black organizations, those organizations aren't. Malcolm X style, Marcus right. Barbieites. They're, they, they're, they're not, not unapologetic. Yeah, they're not unapologetic. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not on that page. And so, I mean, a lot, like I said, it would just behoove us as black people to do the math and say, okay, that sounds good. Capital B, capital black news, because that's what it means, right? But let me see what you really about. Let me see where you're getting your money from. Let me see who's running your organization. Let me see what your ideologies are. Let me see what you, where, what you, where you lean. Do you lean left or right? And are you giving people the news, they, you know, the, the right information? And like I said, from what I saw, I didn't see that. But again, always pay attention to, to people who are promoted, especially black people who are promoted with the news. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Well, and then the the news outlets that, you know, are like MSNBC and different things like that. You got to be careful of that. Like, why are y'all promoting these these women in this Capital B news all of a sudden? Because they said it on their on their website. We are to be an antidote 
to misinformation. And so if you really break it on down, what does the left wing, the Democrats, consider misinformation? Well, they consider misinformation the stuff that comes from news uh, outlets like these, black new black media, that's really informing black people and waking them up. The misinformation is that of now they got less and less voters turning out for them because they are getting the truth. So to them, that is the miseducation. And so they want to be the antidote Go, to that sister. and mm-hmm. be... Black women, because they can, black women say they're the backbone of the Democratic Party, so they're going to get these black women on there, and indeed, they got a lot of black women sitting on, you know, different positions and stuff, editors and all that other stuff, but when you see black women who are very smart, they seem like very smart sisters, and they are touting that of the left their talking points and people will maybe, especially women, because they are, the Democrats are starting to lose women as well, and maybe if they see those black women sitting there spewing, you know, talking points, stuff like that, they'll say, oh, okay. The black sisterhood. Girl. The sisterhood, girl. We got to stay with the sisterhood. If the sister said it's good, it's good. Yeah, you know, black girl magic, this, that, mm-hmm. and the other. So I, I just would impress upon anybody to do your homework on this organization. Yeah. Don't, you know, run off as, oh, this is the news. This, this is a credible news outlet. It might be credible, but is it going to be incredible for right. black people. Right. And, and then, you know, it's not just to do the uh, work on that one. Do it on all of them. We're not going to just, you know, pinpoint this one. Look at Roland Martin's one. That, that nigga hasn't been right since he got down to YouTube. You don't right. hear him saying anything about the Biden administration and what they've done wrong. He never tell, says anything about what they've done wrong. But he be, y'all, y'all, y'all niggas just, just don't know politics. You know, y'all, 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 y'all just don't know. We got to go on to the next one. Oh, well, we we got to get more Democrats elected. We got to do all this other stuff. Demetra, what do I say on, on this podcast all the time? We have more than enough elected black officials in positions, and yet the culture does not change. A young man was murdered in Minneapolis, in Minneapolis, and yes, the warrantless uh, uh, warrant was no knock warrant. The, the no knock uh, warrant was not allowed, except in exceptional situations. I don't know how that situation was exceptional, but where are the outrage from the black representatives out there? I didn't hear a statement from Keith Ellison, the attorney general of Minnesota. I didn't hear, you know, and, and then the black mayor there, you know, he, you know, he, he just won reelection. He was speechless. And then the, uh, one of the ladies that came out to talk to them in regards with the family, cause you know, you got crump up there, of course. Mic drop. <laughs> you got crump up there, whatever. She was pointing out that they have started what seems to be like a cover up once again. But Demetri, and I know we're talking about the, the B News, but would they cover a story like this? Because you got all these outlets out here that aren't covering, but the new black media is. And my question to you is this if we had received qualified immunity or a a bill that's going to protect us from these police oppressors. I think about this all the time. Would this man have been murdered? Do you see what I'm saying? It's like when, when these Maxine Waters and Bernice Johnson's and Cory Booker's and all these people that have the power to, to do something, be it in the news every day or whatever, more and more black people are getting murdered. And they're not murdering 78, 72 year old baby boomers. They're murdering millennials and people younger than that. But we can't get a bill done and these people are dragging their feet to get us in a protected status. Right. Uh, I I mean, I don't know what they will report on. Mm -hmm. Um, I was actually trying to see something, but um, a codo I'm not sure where she's from, maybe Mm -hmm. Ghana, but, and then not to be divisive here, but if she is not, uh, right. Descendant of fundamental, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Slaves here, descendant of slaves. What viewpoint will she write from? What viewpoint will she steer the, the, the publication from, and I'm just asking questions because mm-hmm. as of lately we've seen that, you know, a little rift between Africans, you know, and African Americans, if mm-hmm. you will, just to make the difference. And so is she going to write and govern that publication from uh, a black American 
standpoint or is it going to be from the viewpoint of where she's from? I believe Ghana, don't quote me. Right. I could be wrong. A, 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 a colonizer oppressive type writing statue. You know? Right. And then the other girl, I'm not quite sure where she's from, so forgive me. But, you know, that's something uh, to be considered as well. I don't know if they'll write about the, you know, the recent shooting in Minnesota. I'm sure they will, but what standpoint will they write about it from? Will they talk about it from that uh, they need to defund the police, which Biden is not um, interested in doing. In fact, Biden has made his tour. He's gone to New York City and sat down with Mayor uh, Eric Adams and said that, you know, hey, we need to think about bringing uh, um, back and close, uh, police officers and you know, some of these uh, breaking down and trying to uh, curtail some of this violent crime because there's yeah, what is that broken crime. windows policy, broken windows policy? Yeah, that was through Michael Bloomberg. Mm -hmm. um, but we need to bring back some of these uh, programs to curtail the violence in New York City. And what so, violence are they talking about? Because well, I don't think it, it, it has gotten any worse than it's always been. Well, they said from uh, this time last year to this time this year, uh, it's been an uptick in New York City, about 40 percent of um, violent crime. So what that actually means, uh, and, so, and they talk about gun uh, gun violence as well. So. So, so, so you're telling me the biggest police department in the United States paying all that money and they can't curtail the crime in a city that they... Well, actually, Biden is actually talking about giving more money, about $500 million more money to uh, local uh, to police departments and community uh, organizations that help, you know, curtail crime. So they're going to actually throw more money, more money into policing and so will they talk about those things i don't think i don't know they might what about might, reparations probably not they might talk about it but will they be a staunch advocate for it i don't know it remains to be seen i mean it's a fairly new um, organization i will hope that they will since they have major backing and they're going to get a lot of support from a lot of you know big time organizations i saw that akoto she had tweeted uh, from John Legend, he told people to follow them and, you mm -hmm. know, subscribe to that uh, publication. And so they've got a lot of, you know, big names out there uh, uh, rooting for them. So, yeah, but once again, again, you got a lot of big names out there that they don't want to rock the boat and, and mess with their coin. Like I said, these ladies, I first heard of them back in November, September, November, or October, November, around that time frame. Then they disappeared. Then all of a sudden, as black people are seeing that the Democratic Party is still giving them the middle finger, um, they pop up, and it's February. Where were they in January? You, do, do you see what I'm saying? It's like I, it's just kind of suspicious, and you know, and it's so sad that our sisters are being used like this continually just to get the bag, and it's actually hurting us now, um, ladies and gentlemen. If you're listening to this podcast, I don't care what what you have to say in listening to this, but this is the truth. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys the truth. You look at Demetri K, you look at me, myself and other people, 30% of the black community is doing very, very well for themselves. That's a fact. Okay. It's the 70% that we speak about on these programs. Okay. And how, why do we speak about the 70%? Because these people are, are below at or just above the poverty line and they're struggling and they're failing. Okay. Here's, the scenario, and I want you guys to think about this as you're listening to this, as you're sitting in traffic. How long do you think it will be before the 70% is eradicated and you people that are in the 30% think that they're not going to come after you? How long do you think it's going to take once they get rid of the 70% that they're going to uh, come after the 30%? It's just, it's just going to be a matter of time. So what I'm saying is just what Malcolm X said back 60 something years ago the ovens will be built and they will be hot they will be built before you realize they're hot meaning that they're on and this is why we we talk about and we we advocate for reparations and all this other stuff because if 70 percent of our people are failing it would be just a matter of time before they come and get the, the last 30. right so again do your research. See if that's something that is going to actually be beneficial for black people. Grift, I mean, and, grift, and, grift, and, grift. And, and the other thing that we should consider, too, is how many of uh, the uh, news, black news, new black news media organizations that you do follow, how many of them got nine million dollars in right. that, you know, couple, a, a, a little over a year of them um, forming, 
how many of them got that? You know, so that's that's really something to be considered. Like, why are y'all getting so much funding? What what information do your donors and you, I guess, really want to get out there to black people? Why, why, right. why and how have you raised so much money in a relatively short, short amount of time? A couple of months. Uh, Phil Scott, I remember when he started, you know, he was doing his thing back uh, five or six years ago when he started. When we started, we haven't raised nowhere near that kind of money. Right. If you'd like to donate, it, that's right here at the bottom. And all that. absolutely, so, you know. So, yeah, I have. You know, we, we really do have to question that. But um, let's transition real quick. And and by the way, what what was the name of the organization? The B News. Capital B News. Capital, Capital, Capital B. B stands for Black. Capital B News. Mm -hmm. And you know, and, and like I said, you know, we're we're going to be monitoring those, those guys, and we'll we'll give you guys an update on that. But um, in the news, let, let, let's transition here. Um, in the news, Joe Biden administration has giving is dedicating thirty million dollars in regards to getting uh, crack pipes to people to smoke their drugs. And have it, uh, how many times have I said, you guys, that why is it that a black issue, crimin criminalization, and drugs is a black issue? Well, the Biden, the Biden administration thinks by giving thirty million dollars that they have done something for black people. Could you please elaborate on that? Yeah. So what it is is the Biden administration via the health and house uh, health and oh, health. Oh shit! It's, excuse me. It slipped my mind. The health, mm -hmm. health and welfare. No, 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 no. It's it's gonna bug me. But anyway, hold on a second, because it's really gonna bug me if I don't get it right. It's uh, health and human services. Human <laughs> services, gotcha. Because yeah, I had a whole bunch of other things going through my head. Mm -hmm. So the Biden administration via the health and human services is going to uh, allocate $30 million to local governments and nonprofits to distribute crack pipes for crack users and meth users. Now, uh, the premise is that it will cut down on infection and overdoses somehow. Yeah, hepatitis C, yeah. Infections and overdoses, and because they said we give away clean pipes, then you know people won't. Because they said the premise is too. Also, people cut themselves. However, sometimes with crack pipes, and if they're dirty and they're reused over and over and over again, it could have infection, and they could you know get hurt, die. I guess. Right. So and, they and, just want and, and and they want to set up zones to, so that people could use them in certain zones. Kind of. Um, well, they they they. Potentially, they yeah. there used to be stuff like that. So they wanted to give this money, like I said, to nonprofits and uh, local governments in order to curtail uh, overdoses. I don't know how it curtail overdoses, but infections. Um, and it also says they want to um, help with racial um, inequity. Like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, $30 million is a lot for crack pipes, but I think a couple of things that we need to consider is, okay, for one, ain't, and yes, I said ain't, ain't crack and methamphetamine illegal. Yes. So it's like, so you, you're giving people crack pipes and meth pipes, I guess, to smoke something that's illegal. So how does that wash? Like, how do you- Because drugs is, is a black issue. Well- not only that, I think we need to go a little bit deeper than just saying it's a black issue. What's your angle, Joe Biden? You are the author of every major and minor crime bill since 1976, and a lot of those crime bills have to do with crack and cocaine disparities, and a lot of people got locked up on the crack more harshly than white people ever did. A lot of white people didn't get uh, locked up over cocaine. Black people got locked up over cocaine. So right. now you mean to tell me you're going to throw $30 million in helping people smoke more crack and smoke it out of a clean pipe? We should not be so silly to fall for that. If you're the author of all those crime bills and three strike laws and all that, that's got a lot of black people still in jail disproportionately. How is it that you come in 2022, Tom, I'm going to give you some money for our people money to get y'all some clean crack pipes. I think we need to ask what's really your angle here. Like what's really going on? Are you trying to incentivize drugs uh, and, and have people do it more since it did not work as far as eradicating completely the black community? 
when in the 80s when crack cocaine was a big thing are you trying to bring it back like what's going on here is it a catch-22 are you trying to catch drug dealers and lock up more people behind them like how do you listen in a lot of states yep, federally right. speaking marijuana is not even legal so you mean to tell me you're giving people money for crack pipes how does that make any right. sense and, 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 then, and then you think about this uh, the people that do have an addiction, and you know, and God bless them because addiction is real. It's it's a real thing, you know. And some and some people, uh, they they hit it one time. They're addicted for their life, and now you're going to give them free crack pipes. How does that help them, knowing that they can go someplace and get and beam up, whatever you want to call it, and you know, you know what I mean? It it it, it just wouldn't. It wouldn't. It, it basically incentivizes the person who's trying to get better. To not get better, Would, well, wouldn't you say? Um, I mean, I mean, I guess it, I could see it that way. You know what's the, you, you, you know what I mean? And and then in a lot of states and in the federal government, drug paraphernalia is still illegal. You could get arrested just for having the paraphernalia. Well, drug, drug per, per, yeah, in, in many states it's illegal unless it's mm -hmm. state or federally right. uh, um, approved or whatever however mm -hmm. that is. So I guess mm -hmm. maybe this is a federal approval of that, but I don't think we, and it is targeted to black people because we know that crack uh, targeted black people and that was via the CIA, you know, and they were very instrumental in the, you know, the Iran Contra. And, well, you know, there you go again. There she goes again. Yeah. Yeah, Ronald Reagan uh, here. I'm going to tell you, I knew nothing about it. Yeah, but then, you know, Nancy Reagan standing up there talking about say no to drugs and, you know, right. all that other stuff. So, like, <clears throat> on one hand, you want us to say no to drugs, but then you're dropping the drugs off into the neighborhoods, and now you're coming circling back around and giving us clean crack pipes. So it's like, mm -hmm. how does any of that make any sense? And I'm like, I surely hope they don't think we're going to fall for this mess. And, and, then, and then let me ask you this, because I kind of read up on it a little bit. Okay, let's say you give me a free crack pipe and I happen to overdose or I harm myself in a way that results in a death. Who would be liable in a situation like that? I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you would probably have to sign some sort of a waiver. And the other thing, too, is hmm. you get a lot of these nonprofits, you know, they're going to be incentivized to go out there and yes, get a mm -hmm. crack smoker. Got a clean pipe for you. How about you come to this free crack pipe giveaway? Yeah. You know? as, a matter, as a matter of fact, the uh, cutoff for the application as a nonprofit to participate in that program ended yesterday. And the funds will start going out in May. Right. So, but, is, uh, but isn't that funny how nobody had heard about this until it, the story broke today? Well, because everybody else is so, you know, uh, distracted by other stuff that's going on. And that's mm -hmm. what they do. And I like to steal that of uh, Spike Lee when he was talking about uh, Tyler Perry giving uh, malt liquor for black people. Yeah. It is malt. We, we, we've been stuck on the malt liquor. Kim and Kanye. Oh, this person over here is mm -hmm. Wendy Tasha K. Yeah, so all these other people, and we've been distracted, and that's what they do. They distract, they highly distract black people. We got Brian Flores talking about how the NFL is treating him wrong, and the Super Bowl is coming up. And so they know that black people are going to be distracted with the low hanging fruit. And while they're nipping at the low hanging fruit, we're going to pass this stuff on in there. So right. the question is so if you circle back to uh, Capital B mm -hmm. News, will they be talking about how horrible it is that? The uh, Biden administration would give thirty million dollars for crack pipes, but will not give thirty million dollars for reparations. Right, exactly. And um, you know, isn't it funny that notice that a, a certain group, the baby boomer group, the older group, is like, "Well, he proposed this, he proposed that, he proposed, proposed, proposed," and Biden sat up there and said, "I'm going to do all this, right?" And then you look at the bills, and stuff's been taken out of the bill. So uh, there was something recently that was taken out of the bill. It was the school. Something was taken out. And Jill Biden. Something for uh, city colleges. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But see, that's what I'm saying. Oh, we elect us. We're going to do this. And it's all set up. And then quietly, like you said, uh, people are distracted. They take that out. And then we think that these people have done something. But my thing is, if black people aren't appalled and have had it up to here by now with the Democrats and their shenanigans, I don't know what else will do. I mean, I think to me, I mean, the Democratic Party has jumped the ship or jumped the shark, if you will, uh, a long time ago. But the funding for crack pipes, I, I just like 
I'm like, what, what else? Like that is that is pretty degrading. Like, you know, black people want reparations. We want a qualified immunity to be gone. Want better we schools, want, the basics. We want all of those things, but you keep bringing forth nonsense. Juneteenth, uh, 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 my Angelou up on the money. Then now you got crack pipe distribution. It's like, yes. what else are you gonna have? Fried chicken wing day for niggas. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm just saying. Excuse my friend. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're gonna give out free rebates, five dollars off your chicken bucket. Can't see. <laughs> what, what 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 else is there to left to do? You know but, what I mean? Like but, how but, how? But what gets me? It's just the outright disrespect.